Okay, reading the New Testament recovery version. LSM, it says on it. This is a free Bible I got in the mail. <clears throat> you can look up on Google, free Bible, and they'll mail you one. You just give them your address and name. Chapter 6 of Matthew. Matthew. We have already gotten through chapters 1 through 5. And those are videos before this one. And I'm going to put this all into one giant video. Okay. <clears throat> Chapter 6 of Matthew. <clears throat> Concerning the righteous deeds of the kingdom people. But take care not to do your righteousness before men in order to be gazed at by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in the heavens. That's why I'm filming this video without showing myself. <clears throat> I did that on faith alone. It felt right. It felt wrong to show myself in this video. So I have not shown myself in this reading of the Bible. Unless I feel that's appropriate in some way to not get the glory. God gets all the glory. God gets all the glory. God in heaven gets all the glory says that in this book. Therefore, when you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be glorified by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. They already got their reward. <coughs> But you, when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms will be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, because they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners, so that they may be seen by men. <clears throat> Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. Alms in secret. That should tell what this, what alms in secret means. Alms in secret 41A. The kingdom people live by the Father's divine life <clears throat> and walk according to their spirit. Thus, they are required to do good things in secret, not in public. Public exhibition does not correspond with the mysterious hidden nature of the divine life. And for two, the kingdom people, as children of the Heavenly Father, must live in the presence of the Father and care for the Father's presence. Whatever they do in secret for the Father's kingdom is seen in secret by the Father, and he will repay them. Their Heavenly Father's seeing in secret must be in it, an incentive to doing their righteous deeds in secret. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go back to reading the Bible. <clears throat> And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, because they love to pray standing in the synagogues. Okay, they have their reward in full. We already read that. Five. Six. But you, when you pray, enter into your private room and shut your door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. And in praying, do not babble empty words as the Gentiles do. For they suppose that in their multiplicity of words they will be heard. It's not how many random words you say. It's not empty words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows the things that you have need of before you ask Him. Wow, He really does. Before you even know yourself before you know you're going to say or before you say it somehow you're he knows that you're going to say it 
or think it or do this, something like that. You then pray in this way. Our Father, who is in the heavens, your name be sanctified. Your kingdom come, your will be done, as, is, as in heaven, so also on earth. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts. Some say, forgive us our trespasses, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Forgive those who trespass against us. 1A. Where's that? <laughs> down here somewhere this prayer has a pattern cares third for the kingdom people's failures before god and for their okay they forgive their failures the kingdom people should ask the father to forgive their debts their failures their trespasses as they forgive their debtors to maintain peace okay this is the our father prayer this is really good Okay, this is the Our Father prayer. You then, it says, you then pray in this way. Our Father, another way to say it is this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. They are yours, God. Amen. That's how, it, that's how I know to say it. Here's what it says here. You then pray in this way. Our Father who is in the heavens, your name be sanctified. Your kingdom come, your will be done. As in heaven, so also on earth. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and do not that's forgive us <laughs> forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from evil from the evil one that's the devil who's responsible for all evil <laughs> for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen for if you forgive men their offenses, your heavenly Father will forgive you also. That's what it's saying after the prayer. That's what it really means, forgiving their trespasses. But if you do not forgive men their offenses, neither will your Father forgive your offenses. Wow, that really says that in the Bible. That's the actual Bible that says it, not the notes under here that the guy who did this version wrote. It actually says that, and I understood that, too. I've been thinking about the Our Father and how it does that. When you forgive others, their trespasses against you. When they're mean to you, forgive them. Take every chance you get to forgive them. And don't hurt them back. And then don't worry about it. They're probably, it's probably not going to hurt you that much. You can get away from them if they're hurting you too much. And just the Bible says, forgive them, and then you'll be forgiven by your heavenly Father in heaven. Therefore, do not be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own evil. Chapter 7, concerning the principles of the kingdom people and dealing with others. <clears throat> do not judge that you be not judged. Do not judge others. Wow, that's a really good one. 1A and 2 of 1. Where is that? The sixth section of the New King's Decree on the Mountain, V version 1 through 12, concerns the principles of the kingdom people and their dealings with others. Kingdom people living in a humble spirit under the heavenly ruling of the kingdom always judge themselves not others. It says, do not judge, that you be not judged. For with that judgment, you judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure 
you measure, it shall be measured to you. Wow. That judgment, when you judge others, it'll be, you will be judged in that same way. In that same measure, you, you'll be measured too. And why do you look at the splinter which is in your brother's eye, but the beam in your eye you do not consider? A giant beam, a be giant, uh, could be a beam of light if you're that good. Unless um, the beam is like a big um, piece of wood, but it's, um, why do you look at the splinter which is in your brother's eye, but the beam in your eye you do not consider? For me, I think that's the sunlight beam. But um, I think it's, you know, interpreted to their meaning of it as something different. If, you, if you've done something much worse, how can you judge them by having a splinter in their eye? When you had some, or, or a splinter in their hand or something like that, when, they, when you've done something worse. Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the splinter from your eye and behold, the beam is in your eye? It's not true. It says hypocrite. First remove the beam from your eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the splinter from your brother's eye. <clears throat> be kind and good yourself, then you'll be able to help them not sin as much. Do not give that which is holy to the dogs. Oh, that was a that was a big mistake I did one time. Neither cast your pearls before the hogs lest they trample them with their feet and turn and tear, tear you. Pearls, that means actual pearls. Expensive pearls, you don't put them before hogs because they'll trample them with their feet and turn and tear you. Because that's what they... That's what they know of those things. You can't give your something holy to dogs. They don't get it. They're looking for a quick meal or something like that. Terrible. I'm glad I read that and I understand it now. Reading this Bible will really help you so you don't make mistakes really big mistakes throughout life. This is the meaning of everything. This is the meaning of everything. If I had known that. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it shall be opened. Or what man is there among you who, when his son asks him for a loaf, will give him a stone? Or what man is there among you who, when his son asks for a loaf, will give him a stone? Or also when he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children... Being, how much more will your Father who is in the heavens give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, all that you wish men would do to you, so also you do to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Okay. Wow. That's more than the Our Father. It goes on to describe more than that. And it has the Our Father prayer in there. Um... 11, one, 11 a and 11 one. <clears throat> this is a great promise. Such a promise affirms that the kingdom people are being cared for and supplied by their father who is in the heavens. Thus they are well able to fulfill the new law of the kingdom and live in the kingdom's reality that they may enter into its manifestation. Okay, I get the idea.
concerning the ground of the kingdom people's living and work. <clears throat> Enter in through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate. Enter in through the narrow gate. This is a very important one. Matthew 7, 13. Matthew 7, 13. Enter in through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate. Enter in through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many are those who enter through it. Because narrow is the gate. And constricted is the way that leads to life. And few are those who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly are they are ravenous wolves. By their fruits you will recognize them. Do men gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree, even so, every good tree produces good fruit, but the corrupt tree produces bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, neither can a corrupt tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not produce good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. So then, by their fruits, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of the heavens. But, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heavens, but he who does the will of my Father who is in the heavens. I'm not sure what that means. I'm going to look it up. 21a and 1. To enter into the kingdom of the heavens, we need to do two things. Call on the Lord and do the will of the heavenly Father. To call on the Lord suffices for us to be saved but to enter into the kingdom of the heavens, we also need to do the will. To call on the Lord suffices for us to be saved. But to enter into the kingdom of the heavens, we also need to do the will of the heavenly Father. Hence, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of the heavens. But those who call on the Lord and do the will of the heavenly Father will enter in. Since entering into the kingdom of the heavens requires doing the will of the heavenly Father, it is clearly different from entering into the kingdom of God through regeneration. The latter entrance is gained through being born of the divine life, the former through the living of that life. So you have to live that way too. You can't just have a belief in God and Jesus and expect to get in and call to God and Jesus. You have to live according to this book. And according to following God and Jesus, kindness to others, all that's talked about here. Forgiving others when they trespass against us, stuff like that. Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of the heavens. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of the heavens. But he who does the will of my Father, who is in the heavens. Okay, not everyone who calls to the Lord will enter into the kingdom of the heavens. But he who does the will of God, my Father, it's capitalized, who is in the heavens, will um, enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you have to do what God says in it and according to this book and what he wants for you. And then you can get into the heavens, not just calling to the Lord and not just believing in God and Jesus. But you have to live that way too and do what he wants of you. Okay. So whatever that may be, and you'll know, 
You got to do the best as best as you can unless it's too hard for you to do it anymore and you just can't do it. You can ask God to help you or Jesus to help you. It talks about it in this book. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, was it not in your name that we prophesied we, that we prophesied and in your name cast out demons and in your name did many works of power. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. And in many other Bibles, this is called workers of unrighteousness. Not just lawlessness. Because lawlessness refers to this book as the law this is called the law the, the real law to follow not the not the police's law you know not the um your local county or city's law we follow those really well those are usually almost always well they are usually for good but the devil can use those to trick people and people can have a lot of big success and money and power and stuff and follow that law but not this law not the bible's law and not be following god and they are workers of unrighteousness those really mean people so depart from me you workers of unrighteousness most of the other um, books of the, most of the other interpretations of the bible call it workers of unrighteousness when they say lawlessness here you workers of when 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 god says here depart from me you workers of lawlessness he never knew them Let's read that again, and and we can read the what it talks about below. Many will say to me in that day that they are judged. Lord, Lord, was it not in your name that we prophesied, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name did many works of power? See, works of power, not good, not works of good, not kind, not acts of kindness to others, not forgiving their enemies. Or, you know, people who claim to be their enemies. We don't have any enemies. We're kind to everyone in this book. We don't, we shouldn't have any enemies besides, you know, the really mean people who want to destroy us and we're not mean back to them. We, we forgive them like the devil and all the people that the devil tricked into meanness and sin and evil. We forgive them when they try to hurt us and we go to God and Jesus to help us and we be kind to others. And they did works of, of power. See? Works of power. And he will declare to them, he never knew them. Depart from you, workers of unrighteousness or lawlessness, as this book is the only real law. This book is supposed to be the law. And a little bit the Old Testament. But, you know, you got to follow your local law wherever you live or else they can put you in jail or something. And they threw Jesus in jail. So let's strive to be Jesus-like and follow the law, this law, and be as kind as we can to others. And generally, you know, in, in America today, the law is okay, but sometimes you have to be a little different when, when um, society is, has become corrupt. When the law, when the other law out there, out there has become corrupt, you fall, and we always follow this law. So, workers of lawlessness, 23 down here. Let's see what 22 says. That day refers to the day of the judgment seat of Christ. Yeah, that's what I had said on their day of judgment. New here means approved. The same word in Roman is translated as acknowledged. The nor never approved those who in his name prof prophecy cast out demons and many, many works of power. But he did those things not according to the will of the heavenly father. The Lord did not deny that they did those things, but he considered those things lawlessness against because they were not done according to the will of the heavenly father this this book is the law they're talking about lawlessness they were not done in line with the divine will thus those who do such things even in the lord's name will not enter into the kingdom of the heavens but will depart from the lord that is 
be excluded from the manifestation of the kingdom in the coming age. And that could be on earth when Jesus comes down to earth the second time and the rest of them are cast into the lake of fire in hell in the lake of fire for all eternity where the devil will go one day and the devil himself the only one who has any amount of power and freedom doing that meanness that he, he that he decided to do to try to attack God that's why he was cast out of heaven the devil that he was an angel and 33 million angels fell with him to earth and they're demons now in hell. They try to bring other people down there to torment them. And that's the only way they know to feel, okay, is meanness. And if you follow them, that's an eternity in hell. And they'll all be thrown in the lake of fire, burning and burning for all eternity. They're souls that are forever burning for all eternity, missing God and Jesus. If only they had been kind. And there's nothing they can do. It's for all eternity. So, everyone, therefore, who hears these words of mine and does them shall be likened to a prudent man who built his house upon the rock. And the rain descended, and the rivers came, and the winds blew, and they beat against the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them shall be likened to a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. <clears throat> and the rain descended, and the rivers came, and the winds blew, and they dashed against that house, and it fell, and its fall was great. And when Jesus finished these words, the crowds were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not like their scribes. Okay. Next we'll read chapter 8. Um, I'm going to take a break in 9. So that will be in the next book. Matthew 8 and 9 and 10. and That will be in the next video. I'm going to... I'm going to take a break. If you're watching this online, you can click like on it. Or, or if it's in a, an extended video, you know, it'll continue here with chapter eight. Okay, this is John Birmingham. I'm going to take a break and then we're going to read more. Okay. Bye.